Hello and welcome to Computerized Engineering. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to run finite element analysis in FreeCAD 1.0 using FEM Workbench. We will start with a very simple example, a round cantilever beam with an end load. And I have prepared a presentation in which I already calculated its deflection. And we will do FEA to see how close we can get to this value. We will also do a mesh independent study to check how deflection and error change as we refine the mesh by increasing the number of nodes. So without any further ado, let's get started. Once you open FreeCAD, you will see this start pitch. Just go to empty file and make sure you are in part design workbench. You can also make the beam in part, but for this tutorial, I will uh, choose part design. Now click over here, create body, create sketch, and let's choose this pin. And in order to create a circle, click here, create circle by center, and let's create a circle. Now let's look at the dimensions. So we have to uh, create a cylinder which has a radius of 15 millimeter and a length of 150 millimeter. So um, a radius of 15 millimeter or a diameter of 30 millimeter. Our sketch is fully constrained. Let's close this and in model while the sketch is selected, choose pad. And in length, let's enter 150 millimeter. Now you can see we have created the cylinder. Now in order to use the FEM workbench, just open this and choose FEM. To start with the analysis in FEM Workbench, the best thing to do is keep this workflow in your mind. So I got this figure from this website and you can find this link in the description or by clicking the screen over here. This website contains a lot of useful information about the FEM Workbench along with some tutorials which you can find um, over here. So feel free to explore this website. So we already created the part in part design. We have the solid and now we are in the FEM workbench. Now the first thing we have to do is set up the analysis. So we will choose the material, set the constraints, set the loads, then we will mesh it, then we will assign the solver, solve it, and then we will finally do the post processing. So let's see how to do that. The first step is to set up the analysis container and in order to do that just go to model and click over here analysis container or you can click over here. So once you click on this analysis container you will see analysis appear over here and if you open you can see this already has a solver. Now if for some reason this is not visible or you want to change the solver you can go here and choose the solver that you desire. The next thing what we have to do is assign the material. In order to assign the material, you can either click here, material for solid, or go to model, materials, and click here, material for solid. Now in this window, you can either enter your own properties if you check this box, or you can choose a material from the material library. We have to choose a material which has a Young's modulus of um, 210 gigapascal, which is typically a steel. So if you scroll down, you will see steels over here. And if you scroll down here, you can see its mechanical properties uh, where the Young's modulus is 210 gigapascal. You can also view the properties in Launch Editor. If you click over here and choose any material, let's choose this one go to the physical tab you can see the properties here as well so cancel and while this material is selected let's click OK so now we have assigned the material the next thing what we have to do is assign the constraint and the load in order to assign the constraint you can either click here fixed boundary condition or go to model mechanical boundary conditions and loads and here you can see the same option so we have to constrain all the nodes on this face so click add and choose this face okay now the next thing what we have to do is assign load at the end of this face so you can either choose this option force load or go to model 
um, mechanical boundary conditions and loads and choose this option so let's choose this face click add and choose this face now we have to change its direction first you have to deselect and go to model view the origin um, click anywhere over here to deselect zoom in and return to tasks click on this axis and then click here direction now you can see the direction is set to Z axis just go to model hide the origin again return to tasks and now you can reverse the direction so make sure this is checked and now let's enter the force which is 20 kilo Newton so here just put 20 kilo Newton and okay now the next thing what we have to do is mesh you can you have two options either you can choose FEM mesh from shape by netgen or you can choose this one FEM mesh from shape by gmesh I will make a separate video where I explain the similarities and differences between the two but for this tutorial let's choose FEM mesh from shape by netgen but here you can see you are unable to select any of this these are grayed out and in order to select this first you have to select the body that you have to mesh so click over here pad and now you can see these have been activated so now click over here and let's start with the coarse mesh so let's enter maximum size of 10 and let's leave this zero and let's start with first order element to keep the node count low apply and you can see the node count is 308 right now so click ok now the mesh is completed and we can finally run the simulation in order to run the simulation double click over here solver ccx tools and in mechanical analysis make sure static is selected because we're doing a static analysis and click here write input file now this gives us an error error on constraint force pad phase 3 and the reason for the error is the mesh is very coarse if I reduce the mesh let's say to um, 6 millimeter with second order apply okay and if I run this again now you can see we do not have any error um, but for the sake of this simulation let's keep this at 10 and uh, first order and let's see what happens so write the input file run the calculation so in 0.3 seconds the simulation was completed and in order to view the result uh, first let's hide this and now uh, in order to view the result double click over here CCX results here you can view different types of results you can um, view the displacements and also the stresses so we are interested in the maximum displacement magnitude which is right now 2.01 millimeter you can also um, view the displacement in action if you slide this this is of course exaggerated and you can see the factor over here now let's record this value 2.01 millimeter for the mesh independent study I have prepared a code over here which will help me to make the plot so 2.01 and the number of nodes can be viewed from this the mesh that we created so double click over here and the node count is 308 this was a very bad mesh let's try to run another simulation where we now refine the mesh but first we have to delete the previous results so in order to do that click over here purge results this will delete the uh, previous calculation now let's view the mesh and double click over here let's decrease this to let's say 8 millimeter or maybe even more let's say 6 millimeter click OK and let's run simulation again so write the input file run the calculation now in order to view the result click here and now the displacement magnitude is 2.26 so let's put 
2.26 here and in the node count this is 603 Now let's further refine this. Click over here to view the mesh. Double click again to edit this. And this time let's choose a second order to increase the node counts. Basically the difference between first order and second order mesh is in how the elements are shaped and how they capture the curves. For example in first order mesh the edges of the elements are straight. This means the mesh follows the shape of the object in a very rough and coarse way which we saw for the first mesh that we created and this makes it less accurate for curved surfaces whereas uh, for the second order mesh the edges of the elements can curve because they have an extra point you can think of it as a midpoint this allows the mesh to better capture the curved surfaces which makes it more accurate however it is uh, computationally more expensive and you can see the difference over here right now um, for the first order the node count is 603 and if I click on second order and hit apply you can see how the node count drastically increased from 600 to about 3500 so let's note this value and put this over here okay and let's run a simulation on this mesh now once you write the input file you can see there is no error and run the calculation close and let's have a look at the deflection now now the deflection is 2.73 millimeter so let's note this as well 2.73 Now let's further refine the mesh, purge the results and now let's try this for 4 mm, apply and now you can see the node count is almost 13,000 and if I view the mesh it looks like this. So double click over here, write the input file, run the calculation. You can see it's taking more time now this time it took 6.9 seconds close and let's have a look at the results now now the displacement is 2.74 millimeter so let's note this as well 2.74 and the number of nodes were almost 13,000 so let's put this value over here so let's have a look at the plot. So here we can see uh, the deflection in blue line over here. Uh, this green line represents the theoretical deflection and this red is the error percentage. Here we can see that we increased the number of nodes from around 3500 to nearly 13000 and the deflection change was only 0.01 millimeter. And I will conclude my simulation over here because this shows that further increasing the mesh density won't yield significant results. However, further mesh refinement may improve the accuracy. So let's close this and return to FreeCAD. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. This was a very basic introduction and walkthrough of FEA using the FEM workbench in FreeCAD. And I was really fascinated by the fact that you can do all this for absolutely free. And if you like my content, you can offer your support by donating a small amount to the channel. You can click on this link. This link is also available in description and on my channel. This link will redirect you to this page over here. So thank you for watching this video, take care and see you next time.